Hey everyone, welcome to this video about how to come out to a partner as spiritual, as witchy, as pagan, or whatever woo-woo thing you identify as. So in my dating as a pagan witch slash spiritual person video, I already talked at length about how it's very hard to make these videos universal, but I do hope that some of the things I say here are going to be helpful for you. No matter what thing you have in your life, what belief or what practice it is that makes you unique and that makes you maybe seem a little bit out there to a partner, no matter what it is, I hope that these tips are helpful for you so that you can find um, a good way to begin a relationship or continue a relationship in the belief system and in the practice that you have. Now, many, many people actually asked me about this. When I asked you guys on Instagram what you wanted to hear about with regards to dating, love, and relationships, by the way, if you have any topics, drop them in the comments. Um, when I asked that on Instagram, a lot of people said this, how to come out to someone as pagan or spiritual. And honestly, this obviously applies to friends as well, not just partners. If it's important for you to come out of the broom closet, it could even be your parents, you know, this doesn't have to be about a partner. This video will be especially helpful if you have a completely unspiritual person, partner, family member that you want to come out to or if you have some practices that are really out there like dancing naked in the woods, seeing your coven twice a week, stuff like that, you know, things that actually affect a relationship potentially because you're going to be gone three nights a week or you're going to need a lot of alone time for ritual, etc. So yes, it's going to be helpful if spirituality is a big part of your life and you want to make sure that it remains that even if you go into a relationship so you don't lose that part of yourself. At the end of the video, I'm also going to talk about my private perspective, just like I did with the dating as a pagan witch spiritual person video and I look forward to your thoughts on it all. I kind of recommend watching that video first because it will help you gain some confidence in your practice as well, but you can also watch this video standalone. So let's get started. Before anything else, this should go without saying, but I'm still going to say it, practice good communication. What does that mean? It means listening to the other person, hearing them out, being truthful to them, asking them questions, how they feel about it, how they are dealing with it, and just being generally engaged and kind and calm in the conversation rather than jumping to conclusions, getting mad at them if they laugh or getting mad at them if they have a reaction you don't like, but rather try to stay calm and try to do your best from your side of things. But of course, expect the same in return. If you need to set some rules for this talk, if you want to have a serious talk with someone, it can help to set some rules so that both of you know what's up and who can do what, etc. who can talk when. Now talking to someone about what you are or who you are is hard. If you're like me, when someone asks you, so what's a witch? You have no idea what to say because it's an array of practices. It's an umbrella term for everything. So is spiritual person. So is the word pagan. All of it are basically umbrella terms that don't say much about the individual practice of the person, but more about maybe their core belief system, but sometimes not even that. So be aware that it's not going to be so easy to define and invest time in knowing yourself before you go into these conversations, before you tell a partner that you're a witch, spiritual, pagan, whatever woo-woo thing you identify as. You should be ready to give a short definition either of your practices and of your beliefs or of the term witch, the witchy discourse, if you don't really want to talk about your personal take in it. You can also just say like, oh, generally witches do this and then just leave it at that rather than laying all of your personal practices on the table if you're not yet comfortable with that. 
it's kind of like an interview and that doesn't mean that you have to fake it or you have to uh, seem as normal as possible but it's just a matter of being able to give an elevator pitch which i think is always great of who you are what you do and what you believe in and that's not just good for conversations like this it's also good for your own self-confidence another pre-note before we get into the big tips about the broom closet and about how I feel about it. When I told most of my friends that I was into tarot, their reactions were the same mostly. It was interest. And I will tell you why that was. It was because maybe they've never heard of tarot. Maybe if someone else had told them they are into tarot, they'd be like, this is weird. But they know me. They know me, they have respect for me, and the difference is if I tell them I'm into tarot, that changes their perspective on tarot. For someone who doesn't respect you and who doesn't know you maybe, who doesn't really understand you, if you tell them you're into tarot, that and their preconceived notions about tarot is going to affect how they think about you. You see how this is two different, two different um, relations, essentially, two different causalities. Either your being affects how they see tarot or tarot affects how they see you. And I think that is why it is good, and this doesn't just go for tarot, obviously. It goes for witchcraft, it goes for spiritual beliefs, it goes for paganism. And I think that's why it's important that you show that you're... Um, open to talking about it, that you are a whole person, that you're not defined by this one thing. Unless you really are defined by your spirituality so much, but then maybe you shouldn't be with an unspiritual partner or it requires a lot of understanding. You know, it's kind of like being a priest. If you're a priest and you have a wife, if you're allowed to have a wife, then that's going to be a big deal <laughs> in your life because it's your job, it's everywhere. So if spirituality is like that to you, that's a little bit different from what I'm talking about here. But yes, that's just what I wanted to say. Ideally, they know you are a cool person and that is why they will be interested in tarot, witchcraft, etc. as well. Or at least don't think it's weird that you're doing this because they know you're a healthy, nice person healthy nice person <laughs> yeah that's how we all want our dating partners and our families to think of us like a healthy nice person <laughs> anyways let's get to advice number zero don't talk about it like it's a big deal mention it here and there i've said this in the dating video as well you know if you see the moon you can talk about how it has meaning for you when you talk about poetry you could talk about words of power or about affirmations you could send little cute messages that sort of make it clear that you are into sending sweet vibes to someone else or something like that or you can just use the word vibes and they will already know what's up <laughs> i'm just kidding but i know a lot of people use that word nowadays but i still feel like it says something about you if you use that word who doesn't know nowadays that energies that humans and objects emit affect us who doesn't know that you know vibes are normal but at the same time, it still says something about you if you use that word. I clearly live in a bubble of woke people. That is why I say these things. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, don't talk about it like it's a big deal. Approach it quietly and slowly. Now, let's move from zero to advice number one. If you actually talk to the person about it, remember what I said about your practice being helpful for you in the dating video and explain it through that angle you know just say you may or may not believe in what i'm doing you may or may not respect it but it's good for me because xyz it's good for my mental health it's good for my mental stimulation i feel like i'm studying i feel like i'm exploring things i feel like i'm curious and engaged or maybe my spells have actual effects you know okay this one is a bit more out there they may not have so much understanding or concept 
of that in their mind. But the other ones, they make sense, you know? Just tell them it's something that is good for you. It's something that works for you. And if they have your best interest at heart, then obviously they are going to understand and they will be open-minded towards it. The second advice I have is show them that you are a 360 degree person, that you are not just defined by your spirituality or by your religious beliefs. Unless you are, then you're defined by it and they have to deal with that. But most people of us, we have other hobbies, we have other interests. Remember what I said at the start, that the concept of the world of Wu should not define you, but you should define the concept of the world of Wu to the other person. And in order for that to be able to happen, you have to be able to show depth. You have to be able to show other interests as well. And of course, your belief system ties into what you like, what you're interested in, and that is fine. But at the same time, it makes you seem like more of a 3D person and not just a witch or a pagan or a spiritual person. So they understand that spirituality isn't the only thing that defines you. Unless it is really the only thing that defines you, um, then this is a different conversation. If all you do is read witchcraft books, do rituals, meet your coven, if this is your life, then your expectations of a partner might look very different. Um, the understanding that your partner needs to have might look very different. So just reflect on that. Be aware of what level and what important spirituality has in your life and show what else is there. Now, the third advice that I have is find common ground. Funnily enough, if the other person is religious, it might actually be easier to find common ground with them than with an atheist. It really depends. For example, if you are with an atheist person, you could go through the psychological angle and just say, hey, this is good for my mental health. This is good for my sense of curiosity. I feel like I'm learning things. And if you're with a religious person who is open-minded, mind you, and doesn't think that you will burn in hell because you're a witch, then you could say something to them like, hey, you believe in God. I believe in goddess or I believe in divinity especially if you're a pantheist like me, there are many religions and especially the main religions who their followers also have sort of a pantheistic approach where they think that divinity is in everything. And of course they still think there is the God, the entity, but if you explain to the other person that you do believe God or goddess or divinity is in everything, they will have understanding for that and they will be able to understand it unless they are closed-minded and think that their belief is the only one that's right. But that's a different topic then. So know your own belief system and also know that your beliefs are legitimate and have a legitimate interest in other people's beliefs and worldviews and then you will be fine if you can have a conversation about that. So take a minute to think about where your practice borders on something relatable. You know, if you come out to a family member, a partner, a friend, you know what their hobbies are, you know what they're into, and maybe you can find some common ground already without talking to them. Of course, if you're dating someone and it's still in the early stages, you may not know all of these things, which then it's up to you to find out. Um, in conversation, but if you already know the person you can probably already say like yeah They have an interest in psychology so I can talk to them about mental health benefits of Spirituality or they have an interest in literature so I can talk to them about words of power and uh, using affirmations or they have an interest in computer science so I can talk to them about you know information witchcraft or cyberspace witchcraft okay that one might be a little bit out there that one might be a little too <laughs> that example wasn't perfect but you know what i mean i think every interest in this world is connected it all comes down to this so many things in our world are connected whether we realize it or not through metaphor through allegory even if we don't see it, it's there. We just have to find it. Those connections aren't always obvious, but if you have someone who is into prayer, 
Maybe the step to affirmations isn't as far as one might think. Or using words of power as a witch is not that different from prayer either. If you use prayer as words or as phrases in your everyday life that you repeat to help you. And even saying something like prayers before food, saying blessings to your food, um, drawing runes in your food with your fork as a witch, you know, all of that is really related. Or someone planning their life in a very detailed, in a very focused manner, and you as a witch doing spells to set intentions and to also plan what you want to achieve. You know, all of that is sort of related. You just have to find that common ground and that makes it a lot easier to talk to people about it. And in the end, so many people that I know who are um, normal, <laughs> I have to laugh myself at that word because I don't know a lot of normal people, neither do I believe that normal people exist. But anyways, what I'm trying to say is that a lot of people who are not pagan, not witches, not spiritual, they do things that are witchy or spiritual in nature, whether it is painting or bullet journaling or um, you know all of these things that are kind of artistic or they craft things for people, gift them to people. All of that is sort of witchy in a way, imbuing something with magic and you can find those relations, trust me, with everyone. Okay, now to wrap it up in a chill way, I'm going to talk about my personal experience with this. And before that, I just want to say thank you for watching so far. I hope you keep watching and let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if this was helpful for you in the comments and what your personal experience with it is because I'm going to share mine now. Let's go. This is just my opinion. This isn't advice. Everything before was advice. Um, now this is just going to be my personal view of things. I said previously that I mostly use um, dating apps to meet new people, which means that they already know that I'm witchy because it says so in my profile. I said that in my dating video and go you know, deeper into that. And I've also said that I'm quite confident in my path, which means that I'm confident in the outside representation of it that people can see and consume. And that's fine with me. You know, if I wasn't fine with people seeing me on YouTube or on Instagram doing this, I wouldn't be doing it. So there's no real going back there. I'm beyond the point of caring about it essentially. So most people that I meet already know. And if I meet people and they ask me what I do, I will say something on the more psychological side of things and sort of explain it through that angle. And then they can feel free to ask me questions if they see me on Instagram, if they see me on YouTube, they can do that. The thing is, I like giving people a window or an entry that is the same as the one that I had. Because for me, it was definitely 100% psychology that got me into it. My mental health, my mental well-being, my sense of exploration, my sense of learning, all of that relates very deeply to my witchcraft and to my tarot practice and also to my YouTube and my Instagram, obviously now at this point, it's a representation of that. And I think that's why it's easier to understand for people. If you sort of explain how you got into it, they will be like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Not that it has to make sense to them. I want to say that again, you have no obligation to explain or justify anything in your practice. But if you want other people to understand, then this is a good way to make them understand. That sounded kind of violent. Make them understand. My practice is much more multifaceted than I show online. So if they want to know about things like goddess work or working with archetypes, I do tell people about that, but there is quite a lot that I just keep uh, private. You know, I just kind of let it rest. If they don't ask questions, I'm not going to be like, listen, listen. And I also have to say, what is sort of special, I guess, in my case is that I would not live with someone else at this point in my life. Uh, if I didn't have my own space, probably never in my life if I didn't have my own space, my own room, my own part of a room that is separate, whatever, I need an own space that belongs just to me. And it's not the same if someone is there and you do a ritual or you draw cards. It's not even the same if someone else is in the same, you know, 
apartment. So cohabiting itself is already possibly a strain on spirituality, on your practice. So I wouldn't do that. I would make sure that I have my own personal space, even if the other person is pagan too, that or witchy too, or spiritual too, that doesn't really have any bearing on it. Um, so I think that's another thing I should mention here. Now, how did the partners that I've had in my life know in my longest relationship, my 11 year relationship, I obviously came into the path as I was with this person already. So they just sort of naturally saw how I got into it. And there wasn't much explaining that I needed to do. Sometimes I like checked in with them. I was like, how do you feel about this? That I'm suddenly into this stuff. And they were like, oh, it's cool. It's fine. You know, didn't take a huge interest. Also didn't mind, respected it all good. And then with other people I've met, they basically just know through my profile at the very latest when they see my Instagram, obviously when they see my YouTube. So it was never a conversation I had to have with an actual partner. I've only had these conversations with friends. That's where my tips came from or with family members. But even then, a lot of the time people don't really ask. You know, they just sort of know that I have an Instagram, that I have a YouTube and they're like, oh, okay, that's Anya now. And they just sort of accept it, you know. Um, of course, that's not very good for the depth of the relationship because if we talked about it more, it might make the relationship deeper. But that doesn't matter to me so much because it, in the end, it's a private thing. If I want to talk about it, I will. If I don't want to talk about it, I don't. And that's basically it. So thank you for being here. I'm going to link some more dating and tarot content and all the good stuff below. Also my Patreon, if you want to support me, that means a lot to me. I have journaling prompts there, tarot spreads, and I regularly check in with my patrons. Thank you so much for being here. Let me know what topics you want me to cover and I hope that you have the greatest of days and the greatest of weeks.